Hello, I'm Hao Xing Yap, an engineer at Keysight Technologies. I've experienced designing RF and microwave components. In this video, I will show you 1. How to quickly design RF, microwave, and analog filters with custom response shapes such as frequency notches and symmetry that would be very hard to do with traditional techniques that constrain me to use fixed template topologies such as Shabishev and Butterworth. Here is a low-pass filter with a steep rejection at 2.4835 GHz to keep Wi-Fi channel 11 within the FCC compliance requirements. One thing I really like about this approach is that I can interactively tune and precisely customize the filter rejection response until the minus 25 dB spec is met before deciding on the best filter topology. This saves me a lot of time compared to brute force optimization on topologies that may not be optimal. I will also show you, two, how to choose a filter topology that is realizable and economic to produce, such as having the fewest number of components. Three, how to transform filter topologies without altering the response to further enable implementations such as replacing lumped with distributed components. Here is the simulated versus measured results on my filter, and they show good agreement, especially with EM simulation. At the end of the video, you can also download the example workspaces I use in this video so that you can try this filter design technique yourself. Unlike traditional filter designs, where you start with a known response, such as Shabishev or Butterworth, and a template topology that you then scale by frequency and impedance, this custom filter design technique we are learning here is called direct or exact synthesis. We start the filter design by first choosing our desired low-pass, high-pass, or band-pass response, and then further shape it by interactively placing transmission zeros in the stop bands to achieve the attenuation we need. Behind the scenes, a filter transfer function for the desired response is being created, from which we can then extract multiple topologies that produce this same response. Mathematically, the transfer function of the filter can be expressed by the ratio of the output over the input signals, expressed as factored Laplace polynomials, where s equals the j omega equals the 2 pi times the frequency. The roots of the numerator and denominator are transmission zeros and poles, respectively. The transmission zeros govern the filter stop band response, while the poles govern the amount of ripple in the pass band. For example, when the poles lie on the circle in the left S-plane, we have a maximally flat passband response, whereas an equiripple response is a result of the poles on an ellipse. Each term of the transfer function can be extracted into equivalent LC elements that make up the filter letter network. Depending on the sequence of the terms extracted, different filter topologies result, but they have exactly the same filter response. This allows us to choose the topology that is easiest and most economical to realize, such as the fewest number of components, especially inductors, because they are more costly. Now let's look at the list of multiple filter topologies that produce the same response. Here we can sort them for the ease and economy of realizing the filter in hardware. Since inductors are usually more costly than capacitors, we choose topologies that have the fewest inductors. This is done by sorting by the number of inductors. Notice that all these topologies have shunt elements first and may not be convenient to house in a package due to proximity to the walls. We can look at the duals of these topologies, all with series elements first. Again, if we sort by the number of inductors, we discover that there are topologies with even fewer of them for the economy of fabrication. Besides sorting by the number of inductors, other fabrication criteria such as minimum and maximum component values and their ratios can also be sorted. Let's recall what we have done so far. 1. We first designed the filter response by placing and tuning the location of transmission zeros in the stop band. 2. Then we extracted multiple topologies and sorted them for ease and economy of realization. The next step is to explore additional network transforms on the selected topology to see if we can make it even simpler and cheaper for realization. For example, here is a low-pass filter 
with three capacitors and six inductors. Let's reduce the component count by network transformations. We can convert the four series inductors into their equivalent distributed high impedance transmission lines by selecting from the list of lumped to distributed transforms. The transform quarter wavelength frequency is our low pass filter cutoff frequency and we specify the characteristic impedance to be 120 ohms because that's about the highest impedance line that I can reliably fabricate on microstrip, otherwise it may be too narrow. Then we convert the two Shan LC branches into equivalent open circuit stubs. Observe the small changes to the filter response as I do each conversion because the lump to distributed transform is approximate. Finally, we convert the remaining shunt capacitor into an open circuit stub. The distributed transform quarter wavelength frequency is our low pass cutoff frequency by default, and we specify 25 ohms to be the characteristic impedance for the capacitive stub, otherwise it may be too wide. Now we have no more lump components in our filter to buy or solder. I'm curious to see the actual layout. Let's convert this into microstrip on a Rogers 4003 substrate. This is the resultant layout. Let's quickly do an EM simulation and compare it with our synthesized response. We see some degradation to the return loss in the pass band, which can be recovered by optimization if needed. Here is the animated surface current plot of the signal in the pass band and the stop band. As I mentioned before, you may like to download this and other custom filter design examples by clicking on the link so that you can learn and apply this design technique yourself. Altogether, there are 190 network transforms for lumped and distributed circuit elements. Some transforms are exact in that they do not alter the response. The other transforms highlighted in red are inexact but are useful approximations in realizing filters, especially those involving distributed elements. They are collected from numerous books and publications, such as the classic book on microwave filter design by Mante, Yang and Jones. Don't worry, you don't have to read these difficult books, nor remember all these transforms to get started, because every equivalent network transform has a before and after schematic to guide you. Here is an example of a pi to t schematic transform. Different transforms can be applied one after another to arrive at a topology that is easier to fabricate, like the low pass filter shown earlier. The way to think about using sequential transforms is like a chess game or solving a Rubik's Cube in which you plan multiple steps ahead. Mastery comes from exploring and trying new transforms until you have familiarity with the before and after transform schematics. The transform history records the sequence of transforms and allows you to undo wrongly applied ones, and is a very useful tool to learn about them to gain mastery. Now let me introduce just one of the many useful transforms in this list. The Norton transform is particularly useful in shifting impedance values up or down to match available component values, and even create negative component value purposefully to absorb adjacent parasitic capacitances and inductances. It is also used to replace a transformer with a single capacitor or inductor. I learned a lot of practical tips from Randy Ray's book on using transforms to realize lumped, distributed, and hybrid filters. In fact, almost everything in this video is based on this book, so I recommend you to read it too to gain this knowledge. Before I end this video, I'd like to highlight the power of this technique in the design of symmetrical filters. There is a certain beauty in engineering elegance when a filter exhibits both response and topological symmetry. The freedom to place transmission zeros at will allows us to enforce symmetry in not only the filter response but also its topology. For instance, if the ratio of the number of transmission zeros at infinity versus DC is 3 to 1, we have a symmetrical response. By also keeping odd numbers of zeros either at DC or infinity, such as this bandpass filter with 3 infinity zeros and 1 DC zero, 
It has both response and topological symmetry. This means you need to only stock half the number of unique components in realizing this symmetrical filter. I'm using Keysight Genesis in this video, but if you are an ADS or Advanced Design System user, you can transfer the filter design in Genesis into ADS with a single click. Let me show you. Here I have a blank ADS schematic open, ready to receive the synthesized filter from the active Genesis schematic window. From the File menu, choose Export Schematics to ADS. Now you see the schematic in ADS for you to do additional analysis or integrate with other designs. We've come to the end of this video. To learn more, I invite you to download the zip file containing 1. Workspaces I use in this video, 2. Workspaces used by Randy Ray in writing his book on direct filter synthesis, 3. Self-paced tutorial workshop on designing filters using Genesis, 4. White paper explaining direct filter synthesis, and 5. Example on how to design a diplexer with direct synthesis of bandpass filters. Thank you.